Are you ready for the thunder? Because here comes the bolt as Thor Ragnarok's Juice TV. We look back at when Thor and Loki themselves surprise Cohen at the hospital. Amy, Emily and Jack pay a super secret visit to the set while Thor Ragnarok was filming on the Gold Coast. And Loki and some guests from the hospital walk the red carpet of the Australian premiere like Asgardian gods and bring you their early thoughts on the movie. Hey, I'm Harry. I'm hosting this episode of Juice TV, and today I'm coming to you from the Asgard Prime Room. I'm at the Marvel creating the cinematic universe at Goma. It also happens to be in Thor Ragnarok, which hits cinemas in October 26th. It was filmed here in Queensland, and they happened to take us along for the ride. Before we show you what went into Thor Ragnarok, let me show you why I rock. Ten-year-old Harry is Ragnar rocking it as your juiced host for this special. He's a massive Marvel fan, and his favourite superhero is Spidey. My favourite sport is basketball because I'm good at it. My favourite movie is Spider-Man Homecoming because it's really funny. My favourite saying is, you saw nothing, as in, you saw nothing. If I could have anyone come to my birthday, it would be Ed Sheeran because I love his music. My favourite dance move is I Don't Dance. My best party trick was when my hair was falling out, I would just pluck my hair out. You don't have to travel all the way to Asgard to see Thor and Loki, sometimes they come to you. Let's look back at when the God of Thunder and the God of Mischief crashed Cohen's superhero hostings. This is uh, Loki here and, and Thor, and we're here with Juice TV, and this is Cohen. <laughs> what is it like getting to be a superhero and supervillain? Well, it is very cool, uh, especially when I face this particular supervillain. Yeah. It's very mischievous and it's got lots of tricks and, and so on up his sleeve, so you got to watch him. He's a bit shifty. <laughs> And we're, we're brothers, um, not in real life, obviously. Um, <laughs> From another mother. Yeah, but, and you can tell the fact that we're different because he's got blonde hair and I've got black hair. <laughs> What's the best thing about being the superheroes that you are? Um, superheroes well, and supervillains you are? Yeah, I'd say just being able to play these characters. You know, we both read the comic books and love the comic books and love the, the magical world that they were set in. And um, we get to meet wonderful people like yourself and, and, and come to places and meet many, many amazing people, all of you. Mm. <laughs> yeah. We also get to fly occasionally. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what's your name, sir? Harry. Nice to meet you, Harry. I'm Loki. Um, what's your favourite superhero? My favourite superhero is probably Batman. <laughs> <laughs> we read, me and Harry made that up. <laughs> I like the sound of that guy. The replacement <laughs> of Batman is Batman. <laughs> he has the power of fatness and a fatinator. <laughs> He sounds great. He sounds undefeatable. I didn't think Loki would stand a chance. I was just Captain Underpants. Captain Underpants? Why is that? I don't know. Well, not really. Because he sounds cool. I just like the books. Oh, nice. That's Who's your favourite superhero? Supergirl. Supergirl, nice. Um, Thor, how do you think you'd fare in a fight with Supergirl? Uh, I think she'd beat me. I think she would. Yeah. <laughs> do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who's your favourite superhero? Spider-Man. Spider-Man, good choice. Spider-Man, yeah. kind of fellow good Avenger. Choice. Yeah, one of the Avengers now. That's right, we welcomed him into the team. Finally. Finally. Thank you, yes. <laughs> Sorry it took so long. <laughs> do you like the Avengers? Yes. Yeah? How many times have you seen it? Do you like the Avengers villains? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Which villain do you like the best? I'd say Loki. Loki! Yes. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Carl, we hear you're a bit of a hero as well. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah. Well, I've been doing... I've walked the bridge to Brisbane and raised money for iPads and steam tool walkers for kids and um, I'm in athletics trials and stuff now. 
so it makes me feel a bit happy. You are a legend, right? That yes. makes me very happy and proud of you. Well done. <laughs> you're, you're our hero. A message for all the heroes in the hospital? Absolutely, you're all our heroes. So yeah. Because as we were looking forward to coming and meeting everyone today, and uh, this is our first visit, and, and you're all incredibly brave and wonderful. Yeah. You guys are the real heroes. You yeah. do all the work. Thank you for coming on the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for Thank having you us. Thank you so much for having us. This is Chris and this is Tom. See you later. We'll be catching up with Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston again later in the show. A lot of these sets come straight from Marvel's vaults. And there's been something else in Marvel's vaults locked away for the past year that we couldn't even talk about. But now the time is right, like Thor Ragnarok, it's ready to be unleashed. Hi, I'm Jack. I'm Emily. And I'm Amy. And today, we're taking you on the set of a massive Marvel blockbuster. That's right, Thor's been on our turf at the hospital. And now we're coming to visit him on his. These are the Village Roadshow Studios on the Gold Coast, which are home of the Thor Ragnarok sets. It's a third Thor movie that stars Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston. We were actually here a while ago, but this visit is so secret and special that it's been stored away in the Marvel vaults until now, and we're sharing it with you. We've just been dropped off at this location of um, the outside set of Thor, and we're just going to have a look around and tell you what we see. Oh, yeah, it's real. Touch it. Yep, sounds real. Like they would stand, like Kate Blanchett would like stand up there and just like look out and we'd just like Asgard is dead. Okay guys, look how cool this is. It looks like a real rock wall from the front, but you can see from the back that it's pretty much all fake. It's amazing how lifelike it looks. You can see how much carving out of the fake stuff they use to get it in every little hole to make it look so realistic. It's amazing. I feel like this would be like Kate Blanchett's world. Like, cause, or um, the lady that's um, playing the actor um, as Valkyrie. I feel like this would be her world. It's very like proper and Oh, good day, sir. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm lost for words, honestly. Like, it's just amazing. The amount of um, effort that it looks like everything here has been put into, but yet it's just for like a movie. Like, it looks like it's a very ancient, like, little civilization, but yet it's all, you tap on it and it'll, most of it looks and feels fake. It's amazing. We're here with Dan. Can you please tell us what the role of a production designer is? It's pretty much what you see around you. It's 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 the it's designing the environment and the props, everything except costumes and makeup. So everything else you see on the film is part of the production designer's role. And it's also to make sure you design stuff that can be built, but also stuff that that uh, addresses the script. And, and of course the director's vision for the script, so a very really important part of it. How long does it take to make a set of this size? Uh, we were actively building this for about 16 weeks. How long did it take you to design this? We started off in LA in January and 
came up with the original design concept, which was that we would use the Jack Kirby art from the Marvel, pic the Marvel comics from the 1960s. So yeah, January uh, through until about April, and then we started, once we got here, we started drawing up the actual set designs. At the ancient gold looking set, what part in the story does that actually come into play? Well, that is a piece of Asgard. Now, it's a piece of Asgard we haven't seen before. It's the back streets of Asgard. What happens to it once you're done filming? Oh, uh, well, you know, we, we keep the good bits, the small pieces that can pack into a shipping container, but all of the rest uh, gets um, discarded, you could say. Okay. Trashed, it gets. <laughs> How does it feel to get rid of a set that you spent so much time creating? You know, it's it's a huge relief. It's one of the things about building sets is you're building for a film. Ultimately, everything we do here is for the film, and the rest of it, it does. It's it's a delight to get rid of it. You get rid of it, you got to build another one. It's fantastic. Peter, the cameraman, and as you know, you can't have a movie without a camera. So, could you please tell us about your role? Um, basically, doing what this guy's doing here, <laughs> Make, making people look good. Um, yeah, pointing the camera, working with the actors, working with Tyker and constructing shots, whether it be on a dolly like you guys were playing around with before in this same set, or on a crane, or handheld, or different tools that we can use, just a tripod on a sandbag on the ground. So, it's just working out the performance and the construction of a scene and then going ahead and filming it. With the dolly, dolly, dolly yeah, yeah. yeah, how many people does it usually take to help oh, you? Yeah, like so it's, look, it's not just me, you, like, you think there's just the camera operator, but so I have a dolly grip whose sole job is moving the camera from a position to a position. So if someone walks in a door down a corridor, if he doesn't put the camera in the right place at the right time, then the shot doesn't work. So you could have a great camera operator, but if you don't have a good dolly grip doing moving the camera, then it's no use to you. There's another guy totally just doing the focus, controlling the focus. So unlike your man here who's doing everything and the lighting on top of his camera, we have myself as the operator. I have a camera assistant who's in charge of building the camera, changing the lenses and filters, doing the focus, so if someone walks from 20 feet away to five feet away, they actually adjust the lens on the camera. Yep. And then the dolly grip. And then I ha there's another assistant who does the clapperboard, the, the slate and things like that. And what would you say is the favorite part of your job? Uh, probably the performances, I think. Um, look, it's all a lot of fun, you know, and a set like this is amazing fun with the people involved, you know. Uh, but probably the performances and just the relationships you build up with people over the course of any job. Everyone becomes a big family over the course of something when you're on this for 16, 17 weeks working right next to each other for long hours, you know, five days a week, you all become one big family. you to be a part of Juice TV. We're always on the lookout for hosts, interviewers, behind the scenes helpers and mini producers. You can be any age, you don't have to have any experience. How much easier could it be? To find out the next time we're filming at the hospital, just head to our website, juicedtv.com.au or our Facebook page. For loads of fun to break up your stay in hospital, join the Juice crew. Send us an email at hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to any of the volunteers wearing green shirts throughout the hospital and let them know you want to be involved in the one and only Juice TV. Well, I got to see these cool sets. Uh, the Juice TV superstars got to catch up with the cast on the final day of filming. Thanks, Risk, for having us. The no set worries. has been amazing. Thank you for coming. <laughs> What's the hardest part about your job? 
Um, probably the early mornings. Getting up at four o'clock is uh, not fun, but I've got to say they're, they're learning the lines and uh, working out for this role is um, is fun for me. You know, I love acting and I love kind of all the madness that comes with it. How many of these do you do? How many of them? I train for about three or four months before we start shooting, and then uh, while we're shooting. Um, uh, I can train after work and then during the day I'll kind of try and you know lift a few weights here and there to, to make the, the session at the end of the day less. I actually would like to know, who is the craziest or full of pranks on set? Um, that would be our director, Taika. If you get to meet with him later you'll see why. And if you've seen any of his movies you can, you can get a sense of his, his humour and his kind of attitude. But um, this is the, one of the funnest sets I've been on. There's a lot of a lot of sort of goofing around and, and making jokes. So. so it's not too serious? Not at all. We should probably make it more serious sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I give you your incredible... Yes! We know each other. He's a friend from work. What's your favourite movie that you've starred in? Oh, the, the, the first Avengers was pretty special just because it was uh, the first time I got to meet a lot of those actors and those characters on screen and, um, and it was just such an event. You know, we, we had no idea if anyone was even going to be interested in seeing the film and, and so it was all very new and exciting and sort of nerve-wracking. Um, and then to have the success we had with it afterward uh, it was, you know, a, a very sort of joyous, happy, a uh, relief sort of a moment for, for um, all the cast, I think, and everyone involved. Well, around how many times do you have to film a scene before it's perfect? Uh, well, there's a lot of different angles, you know, and, and when you watch a film, you'll notice there'll be a really close shot of someone's face, a really wide shot, or then there's two people in the frame, or three or four, and um, so it's moving the camera all day. So for a scene that goes for two minutes, uh, some kind of times can take two days to shoot. Thank you for talking to us, it's been amazing. Absolutely, thank you for coming down and thank you for having me on the show. He's always just been someone on a screen, and now he's not. <laughs> he was a lot small, like a shorter, but his biceps, oh my god. Like his arms. How are you? This is Jack. Jack. Hey, Jack. And this nice is Amy. Hi, sorry. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Thanks for letting us come. Um, sorry, mate. How does it feel to be the evil character all the time? <laughs> I've been doing it for a while. You know, sometimes it's, um, sometimes there's a phrase they say the devil plays all the best tunes. <laughs> this means I get to have the most fun. Surprise. This will be such fun. I would like to know, where did you start? Because obviously you didn't become this famous overnight with Thor. I certainly didn't. <laughs> um, I started, you know, they say every overnight success takes 10 years. Um, and I started, uh, I started acting when I was at school and I went to college and I acted there. But I just did it because I loved it. And then I went to um, a place called the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London where I trained. In, in the theatre, it's like a, it's like a proper theatrical training for about three years, um, and then I did lots of plays in theatre in London, um, and eventually somebody came to see it and asked if I could audition for films, and I started making television films, and then slowly, about 15 years after I started acting professionally, I uh, I auditioned for Thor and I got cast as Loki. If you want to do it for a living, you have to um, kind of accept that. It's not going to happen quickly. When you're not filming, what do you like to do? Um, I like to take this wig off, <laughs> which takes a long time. From my understanding, this show's very, like, colourful and a lot of dancing. Can, yes. you, can you show us like, your best dance moves? Oh, my God. <laughs> um, do you have any music? Are you going to beatbox for me? <laughs> Beatboxing. <laughs> Have you got any dance moves, Jack? No. <laughs> I'll beatbox for you. <laughs> you saw it here first. Jack making some moves on the set of Thor Ragnarok. 
I'd like to thank all the nurses, doctors, especially Dr Morag White, um, for helping me through my treatment, my parents, my family. Thanks to all the nurses and doctors that seen me and my mum for taking me up here. And thanks to the Lady Salento's Hospital for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Pretty much the same thing. I want to say thank you to all the nurses and the doctors who helped me and my family for being so supportive through everything. Thank you so much, Marvel, for this super secret, super epic day on the scene. We're so excited to finally share this secret with you. Shout out to all the kids in the hospital. We love you. I'm Amy. I'm Emily. And I'm Jack. See ya! Bye! <laughs>
Denied. Prince of Asgard. Denied. Strongest Avenger. Let me try. Banner. Welcome, Strongest Avenger. Oh, uh, what? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well done. See you soon. Hope you enjoy the movie. Let's walk the red carpet and be one of the first people in the world to see Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok sees the God of Thunder imprisoned on the other side of the universe. He no longer has his hammer and needs to get back to Asgard in time to stop Ragnarok. How did this happen? It's a long story. We need to stop her here and now. To prevent Ragnarok, the end of everything. So I'm putting together a team. Like the old days. Surprise! This will be such fun. Hello. Hi. He's a fighter. Here we go. Yeah. I'm not a queen or a monster. I'm the goddess of death. What were you the god of again? I just came out of the movie and I thought it was really funny. My favorite character was Korg. I liked him because he was also really funny. Emma. Quite unique, it was made from this, this special metal from the heart of a dying star. And when I spun it really, really fast, it gave me the ability to fly. You rode a hammer? No, I, I didn't ride the hammer. The hammer rode you on your back. Let's find out what everyone else thought. I really liked the movie, it was really funny and my favourite part was probably the end because it left you wanting more. The best Marvel movie I've seen in a long time. I like the film a lot. It's really fun. It's super funny. Like, Chris Hemsworth is the funniest he's ever been in any film I've ever seen him, ever. There's so much has happened since I last saw you. I lost my hammer, like, yesterday, so that's still pretty fresh. When I was on the red carpet, Chris Hemsworth came up to me and I got my hammer signed. I thought the movie was awesome because all the fight scenes and it was very funny. And I also thought it was funny when Lo Loki always did this mischievous things. Loki, Lo Loki's alive. Can you believe it? He's, uh, he's up there. Loki, look who it is. Favorite part for me definitely would just be any Loki scene. He's really funny and he's probably my favorite character in the entire film. What did you think of Chris Hemsworth? Oh God, there's no words to explain. <laughs> My favourite character was Thor because I think he's very powerful and I like that he's the god of thunder and lightning. I really liked Hulk because um, when he jumped out of the plane and said, watch this and face planted on the bridge. We're the same, you and I. Just a couple of hot-headed fools. Yeah, same. Hulk like fire, mm. Thor like water. Oh. Kind of both like fire. But Hulk like raging fire. So I like smoldering fire. Um, my favorite character was Valkyrie because she was really good at fighting and I thought her action scenes were awesome. My favorite character was Thor because I loved how like he had that big, like his big hammer, but then when he lost it, he still stood up and he was the Thor that he was. He can be the Thor without his hammer. I thought the whole movie was really funny. That's my favourite out of all the Marvel movies so far. I'm the same as her. I think it was one of the best Marvel movies and I give it nine and a half hammers out of ten. This has been Loki from the Australian premiere of Thor Ragnarok. Bye. Thank you to the cast and crew for giving us incredible access to one of the biggest movies of the year.
It's been awesome hearing Goma hanging out in the Marvel creating the cinematic universe. Just like Thunder, I've dropped, made a big scene. Until next time, see you later. This is the Thor Ragnarok. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Harry, and today I'm coming to you from... Oh, wait, no. I did a lot of things. The um, in their first uh, leave, as they were yesterday. I did a lot of things before this. Hi, I'm Jack. I'm Emily. And I'm Amy. And today we'll be taking you on a... on the scene... Oh. <laughs> That's OK. Jack, we'll just pick it up. Just like thunder. No. Hi guys, we're here with Dan. Can you please tell us what the role of protection? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's alright. Sorry. I'm gonna be getting amongst it and giving you a. S <laughs> Got it. You had it. Man. I don't know if this is a compliment or not, but she's a little bit more tongue-tied than she was when we were filming with Chris. So. I, I understand. Take that as you will. Hi guys, we're here with Chris. <laughs> Remember guys, it's so easy to be a part of Juice TV. Whether you want to be a host, help us out behind the scenes with filming, or decide what goes into each episode, let us know you want to be involved by sending an email to hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to one of the friendly volunteers throughout the hospital in the green shirts. Also head to our website and Facebook page for all the updates about what we're filming at the hospital.